Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about Michael Crichton. Specifically, the author's writing style and subject matter that he chose to implement in his very first official novel. A full 21 years before the release of Jurassic Park. Now, around a month ago, Penguin Random House, the publishing company for many of Dr. Crichton's books, reached out to me to see if I would be interested in covering a reissue of The Andromeda Strain. And of course, I said yes. This new reissue of that novel is being done in celebration of the story's 50th anniversary. And if you're unfamiliar with this science fiction story from 1969, don't worry, I'll fill you in on why it's so important. If you've been watching the channel for a while now, you'll know that I love the Jurassic Park novels. The level of detail that Crichton put into those stories and the blending of science with imagination is something that has really fascinated me for many years now. Having grown up watching the Jurassic Park films, I was always eager to track down the novels and find out what the source material was like in comparison to these great movies that I loved. And around the time I turned 11 years old, I read through both Jurassic Park and The Lost World during the early days of my fifth grade year. And wow, was I blown away. To cut to the chase, these two books really opened my eyes up to the full potential of what a great science fiction story could be. Sure, I was definitely a little underwhelmed that the second book didn't feature a big game hunter named Roland Timbo, but it still gave me a truly evil villain to root against in Lewis Dodson, and a pair of spooky camouflaging Carnotaurus. The first novel also featured a lot of elements that were brand new to me. Raptors digging tunnels underneath Jurassic Park, and that iconic scene where copies infiltrate a woman's house and eat her baby being stuff that never really left my mind. Suffice it to say, after I completed both of these books, my perspective on what a Jurassic Park story could be was forever changed entirely. That being said, it shouldn't come as too big of a surprise to learn that, in many ways, the Andromeda strain is almost like a surreal precursor to Jurassic Park. I'm not going to give away any spoilers here, but basically, the general premise is that the United States government is trying to figure out what's going on with something called Scoop 7. Now, Scoop 7 is a device that they've launched into space in order to find out if there's any sort of extraterrestrial organisms outside of Earth's atmosphere. For unknown reasons, the device comes crashing down to Earth and ends up landing in the tiny town of Piedmont, Arizona. Unfortunately for the town, several grisly deaths soon befall the population of Piedmont, and an investigation is soon started to find out just what it is that the government secret project Wildfire is dealing with. So if you're familiar with Jurassic Park, you'll know all about chaos theory. Nonlinear equations, strange attractions, you've all met Dr. Malcolm. And if you've read the book, you'll know that it wasn't just one specific thing that caused Jurassic Park to fail. While Nedry was indeed responsible for shutting off the power, that was just one problem in a long list of problems that Engine was facing on Isla Nublar. Even without Nedry's interference, dinosaurs were changing their sex from female to male, and some species had already begun breeding. Animals had also made their ways out of their paddocks and stowed away on cargo boats so that they could migrate to the mainland. The proficiency of the on-island staff was questionable at best when it came to their upkeep of these creatures that were 65 million years out of date and, on top of all that, the human's control over all kinds of seemingly simple procedures was never really finite or absolute. Jurassic Park was always going to fail, and the dozens of tiny imperfections in its operating systems assured that. Curiously, the Andromeda Strain features something similar in its storytelling. While we kind of watch John Hammond's theme park deteriorate over time in that story, this older novel shows government men trying to work their way back from a tragedy that has already occurred. It's not really a waiting game on when it will all go wrong, and it's actually kind of an investigation on why it all happened. I like to think of it as the reverse Jurassic Park. Over the course of the story, our protagonists undergo several tests and experiments to determine what killed the town of Piedmont, and if that killer still has the potential to add to an already frighteningly high body count. It's much more of a mystery suspense story than it really is a horror adventure. Another cool thing that kind of differentiates the Andromeda Strain to later works like Jurassic Park is the fact that this book has a very noticeable medical focus. Since Dr. Crichton actually had a pretty good background in medicine, he attended Harvard's medical school after all, you can really admire all of the technical realism that goes into the Andromeda Strain's experimentation on what could be a very scary organism from outer space. 
Just like Jurassic Park, which featured tons of graphs and really heavy science talk on dinosaurs and DNA, the Andromeda strain gives us a good look at things like how bacteria works, the effects of oxygen and carbon dioxide on certain organisms, and even pH ranges of human blood. It's really, really well thought out stuff. You can tell Crichton knew exactly what he was talking about. And also, for just a little bit of fun trivia, if you actually go towards the end of this book, you'll find a graph that should look very familiar to a certain Procomp Signathus population from JP. I thought that was really cool. Seeing as this is a Michael Crichton novel, you could even say that it belongs in the same universe as Jurassic Park. Sound a little far-fetched? Well, it shouldn't. Crichton has referenced himself in the world of his novels for quite a long time. One of the islands of Los Cinco Mortes, Isla Matanceros, is actually mentioned in Pirate Latitudes, and even the evil company, Biosyn, is mentioned in another one of his novels on genetics. Next. More direct similarities with both dino books happen to be the subject matters that get brought up or expanded upon in the Jurassic series. A terrible strain from outer space that has an adverse effect on human beings isn't too dissimilar to something like DX, which was a disease that killed all of the dinosaurs in the Lost World. Take away things like Chaos Theory, Fractal Curves, and Gambler's Ruin, but replace them with something fictional called the Odd Man Hypothesis. It's a pretty interesting exploration on how an unmarried man is believed to be more capable capable of executing dispassionate decisions in times of crises. In fact, there's a really great scene in the book featuring that topic, where Dr. Hall, a man who is unmarried, is told that the entire wildfire team is dependent on him to use a special key to access a nuclear bomb in case anything goes wrong. And of course, Dr. Hall logically protests to such a responsibility, saying stuff like, how can you expect me to blow myself up when something bad happens? And that's when he learns that the key is actually meant to be used to stop the automatic bomb that will begin its countdown if the strain ever gets out, which is a pretty different situation entirely, and it kind of gives Hall a good dose of reality to how serious the stuff is that they're dealing with. It's also pretty funny. Now, unlike Jurassic Park, the Andromeda Strain is actually a hundred pages shorter than that later novel. But don't get it twisted, it's not less sophisticated in its subject matter at all. Its dedication to technobabble, education, and a realistic observation of the scientific process is still really remarkable. And when you get to the last 30 pages or so of the story, trust me, you're going to be on the edge of your seat dying to get to the end. Still, there is the noticeable difference in how the book is written when you compare it to his later works. Being the first novel that officially bore his name, not including the books he wrote under the pseudonym John Lange, you can definitely tell that this was the author trying to find his voice. Sometimes it's not nearly as tight or cleanly done as the first Jurassic Park, but I actually think that it's comparable to The Lost World in terms of quality. There's a lot of points in the book that feature small pieces of foreboding information like, if Dr. Levitt only knew how wrong he was, or Dr. Burton wouldn't find out until later that he was already off course. And sometimes that can get a little distracting to what is overall a really solid story. Now, the ending of this book is really good, and it's something that I think Crichton delivered expertly on. He sets up so many intriguing character traits, plot points, and dangerous situations that eventually all culminate together in a truly awesome way. And if you like Jurassic Park, I really think you need to check it out. Now, with Penguin Random House's new 50th anniversary edition of the novel, it comes with this really awesome image of the world behind all of the letters with a white background. It really fits the story well, and it's something I wanted to point out because, honestly, it blows the earlier edition that I own out of the water. That artwork just kills it. Bottom line, I would highly recommend that you read The Andromeda Strain, and if you haven't already, to get prepared, because a sequel is actually due out very soon. The Andromeda Evolution is continuing the story in a book that's being written by Daniel H. Wilson and due out this November, and I know that I'm really excited for that. Now, I really want to thank Penguin Random House for reaching out to me to go over this book. They didn't have to do that, and the fact that they chose me to actually talk about one of Michael Crichton's novels in earnest, despite the fact that it has no serious connections to the events of Jurassic Park, really, really means a lot to me. I've loved the world that this author has created for many years, and his works have really left a pretty big impact on my life that I'm sure is extremely easy to see. So again, I have to say that I can't thank them enough for partnering with me to do this. To say that it's an honor would be an understatement. 
So, what are all of your thoughts on the Andromeda Strain? Have you ever read Crichton's first book that bore his name, or are you unfamiliar with the story? Also, how much of this book do you think eventually influenced Crichton's work on Jurassic Park? I'd say it really has to be quite a bit, but whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all even continue to watch these videos. And I want to thank each and every one of you for all of your continued support. Now, I'd like to thank all of you for watching this video and hope you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you on the next one, guys. And as always, take it easy.